Hello, everybody. Um, today, I wanted to discuss um, the lightning on our planet Earth. Um, surprisingly, um, probably less than a million people, um, maybe in the hundreds of thousands or even thousands, uh, will have ever looked at the lightning on our planet in this much detail, how much detail we're going to look at today. Um, so in fact, um, what we're about to do, um, maybe the most detailed study ever done of the planet's lightning um, in terms of uh, people looking at this. Um, so I'm really um, excited um, to go through all the details with you. Um, this may take a little bit of time, uh, but certainly um, you'll learn um, one of the most important and interesting things about our planet. Um, what we're looking at here um, is one of the first maps. Um, it's um, actually done by, uh, I believe, a private company. Um, and uh, they uh, basically have tracked the lightning for the entire planet um, over uh, many years, uh, even decades, um, and come up with a map um, to kind of see what's going on. Um, what's really nice about this is there also is a uh, three-dimensional uh, perspective as well. Um, we're going to primarily look at the 3D perspective um, and basically go around the entire planet um, and kind of ask some really important questions about what's going on. Uh, so initially when I looked at this a map. Um, I kind of looked at it a pretty straightforward way. Um, I just looked at it head on from the equator. Um, I just looked at um, pretty much where where is where is the the, the spots essentially on the planet um, with the most lightning. Um, so there's kind of a couple ways to look at this really. Um, and what you'll see is it may actually it, at first it, it's completely shocking to see the. Uh, areas where there is the most lightning, you might think there's way more lightning than there is. You might think there's a lot less um, than there is. Um, and the other really surprising thing um, is how little lightning there is uh, over the ocean. Uh, so I'm going to take you across the Pacific Ocean here, and you're going to see um, just kind of what happens here, um, how it kind of disappears, uh, even though it's really warm. Um, for some reason, the lightning will disappear. So um, we'll talk about all those details. Um, we're also going to talk about um, some of the most... Um, so you'll start to see these weird shapes. So at first, when you start studying lightning, um, you'll look at, well, the hot spots, right? So um, where is the most lightning on the planet? And you'll see that there's very few places where the lightning really um, gets to be extreme. Um, and in some places, it gets to be um, even beyond what you might expect. So you'll see... Um, but if you look at another perspective of the lighting, and I want to kind of look at this from several perspectives, um, you'll see these weird shapes kind of like coming off the edge of the land masses. And then you'll start to see um, how it interacts with the poles um, in ways that you might not expect. Um, and then even going down to South America, you'll see these basically these lightning shadows uh, coming off the land masses. Um, and then you'll see all these really surprising spots, um, like here down in Bolivia and Peru, um, and then particularly in Colombia, uh, also in the Caribbean, and then also in Mexico, which is really surprising um, to see um, huge amounts of lightning. And then you'll probably be very surprised to see so much lightning in the Congo um, relative to uh, the Amazon, right? So the Amazon, you'd actually expect more lightning to collect back here maybe, um, near where the cold air meets the warm air, but actually it collects here in the front of the Amazon, whereas here it collects more where you would expect, which is back by the mountain range and close to the hot area. So, <clears throat> and then here there's kind of a weird spot that you might not expect as well as over here. And then a super unusual spot, basically in the Middle East, uh, where there's no green grass, but it's all desert, and yet you see huge amounts of lightning, um, as well as you'll see a lot of lightning um, basically up in the Himalayas, um, particularly up in Pakistan, where you might expect that maybe more be towards Nepal um, or even uh, in the Ganges River region. And then you'll see um, some of the hot spots down here. Um, and then you'll see um, another kind of uh, very weird area um, down here um, in Singapore and call them Strait of Malacca, um, which is basically 
uh, gets some of the most lightning in the world. Um, and then you'll see um, how this area is just really complex. So we'll have to get into that in detail. And then you'll also see down here in Indonesia, Jakarta, um, where you have the Sunda Strait um, basically also getting a lot of lightning. So you'll have to kind of zoom out here um, and look at this. Um, but um, I want to pause this for a second. So the other thing I wanted to mention um, before we get into all the details is that um, what we're about to do is actually look at the entire planet, right? Um, and there's just so many different ways to look at that planet. So um, here you're going to see some islands, um, and I wanted to really uh, kind of start um, in some very interesting areas. Uh, but basically, as we zoom out onto the planet, um, you're going to start to see um, maybe things are going very differently than you might expect. Um, the one really surprising thing um, is that when you talk about volcanoes, um, earthquakes, um, all these natural phenomena, um, whenever you have a major hurricane, earthquake, whatever, there's actually also going to be lightning. Um, for example, um, they say that one of the biggest volcanic eruptions, uh, which is Krakatoa, uh, right in this region, which is still where they have some of the most lightning on the planet, um, right here, um, basically resulted in over 300,000 lightning strikes. Um, so one volcano um, can really change um, a lot in terms of the lightning. So um, what that means, um, because earthquakes, um, what we found in Russia recently um, and also in Japan with those recent 7.0 earthquakes, um, is that major um, lightning storms also took place. Um, so it's really hard for me to move this map around because there's so much data, um, but I'm going to try to do that um, periodically through this discussion. Um, but basically, every one of these dots uh, probably also included lightning strikes. So if that surprises you, it surprised me at first too. But when you think about it, almost everything on the planet is interconnected. So um, any phenomena um, you touch a light switch, for instance, you flip a light switch, you can get shocked, um, you touch a wall, something electrostatic, um, and, um, you know, so what we have already done, very, very few people have ever looked at everything that we just covered already. Um, so the kind of information that you've already looked at, um, there may be only a few thousand people that have just looked at all this information and we're going to go even uh, more detailed into everything here. Um, so you're probably going to be um, in awe about everything um, that you're about to know about in terms of the planet right now. It was very hard for me at first to kind of um, dive in and say, hey, um, this is how the planet really works. Um, because I kind of really dislike people that say, hey, this is how the planet works. Um, and I'm not going to try, I'm going to try to avoid doing that. Um, I just simply want to present um, as much information as possible um, and then hopefully dive into some of the more spiritual aspects of how the planet works. Um, so, yeah, so I just wanted to thank everyone for really taking a careful look um, at all these details. Um, so we're going to start, unfortunately, I wanted to start really in this region, um, but we're actually going to start this whole discussion in Africa. Um, and actually, I'm going to switch that up. We're not going to start this discussion in Africa. We're going to start it where we get the world's most lightning um, and then jump over to Africa. Um, so this really surprised me. Um, there are maps available on Wikipedia. Um, it turns out that those maps are not as accurate as the maps that we are looking at right now. Um, I think the company um, that works on this probably does a better job. Um, well, at least they've there's a debate. So there is a debate on lightning and where it is and how much it is. Um, so not everything um, is fully known even yet. Um, there's all types of lightning um, and there's all types of clouds um, and there's all types of earthquakes. There's just so much um, to really understand. Um, but what I wanted to emphasize here is that we're about to jump in uh, and look at this very mysterious lake. Um, this is the location on the planet where we get more lightning than any other place on the planet. Um, so we have a tiny little square here. They probably, if I were to just even part of this, what you're looking at, this hand on this diagram here, 
approximately uh, one square kilometer, um, which is equivalent to like the pinky or the thumb or one of the fingers here on this diagram, gets 250 uh, strikes of lightning per year um, in this location. So this, um, I'm going to try to explain uh, exactly why this uh, gets the most lightning. I'm going to pause the video for a second. So I really wanted to thank you for, first of all, taking a look at this. Um, so, I mean, look, what we're doing, now I centered this map, you'll notice kind of on the west is left and, well, uh, you know, east uh, being on the right, uh, because I wanted us to really think about the earthquakes uh, and take a different perspective on this. So we're about to zoom in here on one of the most detailed maps ever, um, and I just love uh, the way this looks on the map. Um, so you can kind of see this weird swirling effect um, on this mountain as well as these huge mountain ranges. Now, these are not just small mountains. Um, these are taller um, than anything we have uh, in North America. Um, this is the Andes mountain range. And it turns out that this mountain range uh, gets taller and taller. Um, and it really is some unbelievable mountains here. So we also have something near the ocean here, the equator, and you also see it being quite dry um, as well um, along that t tip there. So um, basically, um, I'm going to try to explain exactly why this all happens here in a moment. So before we zoom in here, um, I went around and looked at every single location on the planet um, and looked at in detail both the satellite imagery um, as well as the lightning imagery and basically zoomed in on everything. And I was very surprised um, at some of the places where we have the most lightning um, and comparing that to where, for example, we have the most rain. So um, it's not always the same. Um, there are quite a number of surprises here um, in this um, that I was um, very surprised about. Uh, but you can see uh, as we zoom in here, um, it's definitely not simple. Um, we basically have Louisiana up here um, that gets a lot of lightning. Um, you can see that there's a lot of surface area here um, for the lightning, and you can see little pockets uh, in that. So what we're trying to understand here is why these pockets exist, um, why are they where they where they are and not in other places, and what does that mean um, spiritually? So. Um, I'm working on a film actually uh, called The White Refugee. It's about the Amazon jungle uh, and some uh, Russians actually. So um, it's kind of a true story, um, but it's also um, fictional. Um, but as we zoom in here, um, the story actually um, starts uh, with some refugees um, fleeing uh, to the headwaters or the end, the delta a city here um, and then they travel and they get lost on the Amazon River and they end up going north um, up through here there's an actual sec separate section of the Amazon River and there's actually kind of an area which is part uh, has separate countries even um, separate from um, uh, Venezuela you can see um, here Guyana, French Guyana and some others and there's actually quite a number of disputes going on even now um, uh, it's kind of unknown who really has what part of the Amazon in some areas. So, um, and then there's other, there's actually a separate whole huge channel of this river. Um, this almost has a, a lot of water, um, not nearly as much as the, the Amazon jungle, but um, as much as many of the other largest rivers on the planet that a lot of people don't know about. Um, and that's really part of Venezuela here. Um, so this this actually, um, this, this area here is very, very extremely mysterious. Um, so I'm going to go over there on the map um, just so you can see. We've actually gone through the whole entire jungle here. We're going all the way around the planet over here to the Amazon. Um, and you can see kind of the river system here. And you can start to see how there's almost like a pinching area here. Um, and you can see um, there's actually it's actually quite complicated, right? So this happens to be um, where there's the most lightning, uh, but there's another area right in here as well um, that gets a huge amount of lightning. Um, and in some ways you'd argue that this is probably more lightning than this small spot, but it happens that this spot is an important spot to understand because it really emphasizes all the details um, that we really need to understand 
about why lightning, um, maybe not all the details, but it certainly helps us understand quite a bit. Um, what I was surprised is that although uh, a lot of the, um, like you look it up um, with AI or whatever, they'll say this is the most important spot for lightning on the planet, but we're actually going to see other spots on the planet that get almost actually, according to the data that we're going to see, the same amount of lightning as this location here. So there may be, um, it may be another spot other than this. Um, and we're going to look at some, and the weird thing about what we're about to discover here is that, um, so there's like, you'll see 190 um, right in here, 192 um, strikes per square kilometer. That's almost the same. We will see other spots um, that get up to 224. So it may be that they just haven't been able to keep track of all the strikes um, and that's entirely possible. Um, but certainly um, what we're seeing here um, is going to highlight um, some of the reasons. So let's look at this carefully and see what's going on uh, in this spot. Um, so basically we have really hot air um, right from the ocean and then getting pretty dry. Um, as you can see, um, there's some dry areas here um, and then it kind of gets swampy and then it suddenly goes into these massive mountains um, and uh, and you can see Lake Maracibo as well as the town of Maracibo. It's actually quite dry um, along here. Um, so that sudden change, um, and then as you get into this area, basically it's it's is uh, kind of surprising. So um, so it looks to me um, that from the data, as we see here. It's hard to see on this map, um, but you'll notice there's two actual pockets, right? So what we know um, may not be entirely true um, because um, essentially there's this back area here. Um, they get 144 strikes, you can see, and then there's even this area back in here with uh, 192, right? So actually, um, it is kind of mysterious why this area, for instance, would get more than this area um, because this area actually seems to collect um, the area, the the um, you know the clouds better. Um, so what happens is that the clouds actually cannot get above um, the mountains, so they actually get trapped uh, in this region. Uh, and you can see um, it kind of um, can pull right in here. So and we'll pull in here and look at this um, a little bit carefully. I'm gonna look at it on the uh, other map so you can see. Um, what's going on. So you also have a lot of earthquakes. You can see a huge amount of earthquakes uh, right in there. You can see a major fault line. Um, these fault lines do not happen everywhere on the planet, but you can see it running right into the Andes Mountains here. Uh, I'm going to spin this around. Um, and actually, they get so many earthquakes, you're going to start to see even more earthquakes in the backdrop here. Um, so um, it's really nice to be able to look at the earthquake map um, and I'm going to zoom in here, and I actually have this at three times, so the mountains are actually going to seem bigger than they are, um, actually, just to emphasize uh, what's going on. So the actual area is actually two areas, right? So there's actually like a swamp zone in here, um, and some of the other areas that we're going to look at around the planet, you're actually going to see that many of the lightning strike areas are near... Uh, sorry, I'm trying to be funny today. My hair is all lightning. Uh, it looks like I got struck by some lightning, so I just decided to keep it that way. Um, and um, But uh, what I want to emphasize is that there's definitely different um, types of lightning. Um, some is over the ocean, some are over swamps, and some are at the edge of the mountains. Um, and e there's many different categories even beyond this. So... Um, and basically, I just wanted to get you a very clear picture so you can kind of see um, what's going on here. Um, this is actually called Google Earth, um, and you can download it, and you can see some of these areas. So what I really want to emphasize is this. So this is a very common thing that we're going to see is this swamp area. Um, right in here, you have a little river. You have a little swamp. It's even... Um, has a funny name um, here, um, and you can kind of see, let's look out into that little area here so we can see um, what this looks like. Um, so um, I hope to go into a lot of detail about all these areas, but uh, I just wanted to really emphasize this area because this is the lightning lake for the planet. Um, and we're gonna see this 
also in Africa. Um, there's major lakes um, like Rwanda um, and like uh, next to the jungle um, that also have similar characteristics to this. Um, so this is very swampy. Um, a lot of people maybe don't necessarily just go swimming in this um, because the temperature is so warm. Um, and it's fresh water, so with fresh water, a lot of the animals love it, as well as the bact microbacteria. Um, so it's really uh, a different kind of lake um, than you might think. It's more of like a swamp um, lake. So um, let's go back to that other image so you can see um, this one here, because I just love um, the way that this looks on here. So you see kind of a weird buildup um, in the mountain range, some volcanic activity here. Um, even uh, so there's highly likely to have a lot of hot springs so in this region there may be water just shooting out of the ground if you're familiar with Yellowstone um, there's hot water that goes like you know 100 feet up into the air um, these geysers and things uh, probably doesn't happen like that here um, but um, I just wanted to kind of emphasize the importance of all this activity this is just earthquakes recently so you can see um, there's kind of a new earthquake here uh, happening. So I'm going to pause this video again. Um, and I just wanted to say, um, you know, what we're already looking at here, um, very, very few people have ever looked at. Um, so I'm going to post uh, some of the links uh, to these uh, um, maps here so that you can uh, look at them live uh, as we discuss this. So I, I changed my glasses to some yellow glasses and have a red shirt on now because it's a little bit more funny. Um, and so here's the thing, right? Um, I was very surprised to find this area over here. So this is an area, notice, right along uh, the Central America, um, basically Mexico, um, that has 224 strikes per year. Um, that would be um, just as many and perhaps could get even more um, than this other area, right? We saw this area down in here uh, with 190. Um, so uh, I want to look at this area here, and we're also going to come back and look at this area. And then even out here, um, you see a, a tip um, along um, Cuba. So, but I really wanted to give everyone a full perspective rather than just um, looking at just one geographic zone. So, this area here is actually probably gets, um, uh, you could also say, the most um, lightning. So, um, really, in terms of vast area here, right, you have the entire Congo jungle. Um, we have some mysterious pockets um, of lightning um, kind of separating in between here. Uh, so, there's a lot to learn about why. Um, it wouldn't just be continuous. Um, why is there some gaps in here? Um, and uh, why doesn't it just go all the way out to the ocean? Uh, similar like we looked at uh, over here, right? Here, um, essentially, it's really close to the ocean. Um, we have a spot right in here um, where it's pretty deep. Uh, we have some other pockets over here um, that we need to try to understand, right? Um, and um, so the lighting is actually quite different uh, in the Congo. Um, and so there's some important questions about why that might be. So we're going to zoom out here, um, head over to the Congo, and, and already you can see there's a vast difference. You have a major desert, um, basically the world's biggest desert, um, next to the equator here. Um, <coughs> so it's super hot. Um, it's super hot. And um, the only thing to cool it down sometimes is the rain. Um, in the day. So um, look at how amazing detail we have here. So um, what surprised me most about this um, is, um, you know, I was kind of expecting the lightning to be from this side, um, but it's actually coming from this side. Um, and in particular, um, there's a really weird point here, right here. It's hard for me to point at it because of this um, thing, but it's basically right there, right? So that is the Niger Delta um, region. Um, so we want to look at that really carefully because why is it such a hugely important spot right there? Um, and then we have kind of a frontal area and then a back area, right? So there's this back area, which is 
huge um, on this frontal area. And then we have a couple little pockets right in here um, that we want to look at. And then why is it so much up here? So there's definitely different questions um, to look at. So I'm going to look at this map because everyone has access to this. This is just um, the free um, public uh, satellite imagery. Um, so unfortunately, it's all spun around, uh, but we're going to move over here to Africa and see what's going on. So um, if you notice, I'm actually using this earthquake map, which actually looks a little bit more detailed. They take the clouds off and have done a lot of image processing to try to make it as detailed as possible. So in some ways, this map uh, can be more helpful, and it actually is quite a bit helpful. We're going to use that one too. So, um, But um, here you can start to see... Uh, some of the names uh, on the areas, Rwanda and so on. So um, so what really surprised me again is just that um, it's actually coming from this way um, rather than this way. So what we saw here is that this is really dry area um, and then a really wet area. Um, but actually these wet areas, um, if you know, the continent is supposed to be splitting here. And this is actually part of the Nile River. So you can see the Nile River goes quite a bit up here kind of follows all the way down here, follows all the way through here, makes it through the desert even, comes through here to Juba, comes around through here, and then ends, starts right here in this. But it also has perhaps a channel here. You can follow the Nile River, maybe even this direction, that direction, further down here. Um, and basically, uh, part of Nile River that's kind of missing is actually over here in Mozambique. And you can kind of see there's a major delta here um, kind of the opposite side. Um, so that's a pretty interesting aspect of um, things here. Uh, sorry, I'm afraid my hair might get too um, crazy for this conversation. So I was um, dealing with some things here. But um, what I wanted to say, though, um, looking back at this map, so is there anything that you might be curious about, right? Um, so... There's just so much going on, and I just wanted to mention again, um, very few people have looked at it in this much detail ever in all of history. Um, there's very few people even watching this right now, um, and it's kind of unbelievable detail um, that we've already looked at. Um, so another really surprising thing is you'll see um, gaps and some weird kind of shapes as this kind of flows around in through here. Um, it kind of doesn't go always necessarily a direct route um, right to where the lightning is from or going to. Um, and actually, it's probably going the opposite direction um, because it dissipates out into these directions. Um, so I'm going to leave a lot of this um, hopefully up to you um, to look at as well. Um, but I wanted to go to the front, um, kind of the uh, front door here and zoom in here to look at this particular spot um, where we get this lightning here. So um, what we see here is we also have a very swampy region because it's a delta region. Um, it's dumping out. Um, the other thing is this is also near the equator, so it's extremely hot um, already. Um, but it's actually kind of shifted off to the side here. Um, so you can see as we zoom in here, um, this area right here, um, let's see, it gets um, 100 and... 12. So um, you can see it's actually shifted off to the side of the delta, um, and it actually goes quite far out into the ocean. Um, and then there's a separate area here, um, kind of over in Cameroon, uh, on the opposite side of that um, thing. So let's use this map because it doesn't have all the clouds, and it kind of gives us some more detail. Um, unfortunately, I can't um, shift this around like I can with the other map. So we actually see on one side here and the other side here, guess what's on the center of this mountain right here. This is the tallest mountain in all of West Africa. Um, so um, what we start to notice um, is that um, some of these um, locations are actually, um, in, that have all this lightning, um, include um, totally out there um, truths about the planet. Um, so basically, this is a very unusual mountain. Um, You'll notice um, in all of West Africa, there's basically very few mountains <laughs> at all. Um, and actually in all of Africa, there's very few mountains. Um, so um, let me try to emphasize that um, with this map. Um, we'll zoom out of this 
Lake Maracibo. Um, and what I wanted to mention is there's other things that we didn't even discuss here. So um, this loop is a very mysterious loop. It's one of the only loops. Uh, I call this the lightning halo um, or a reincarnation halo um, on the planet. So we have a very mysterious uh, mountain range uh, heading down to Antarctica, essentially. This mountain range is a vast vast mountain range and it's not anything like we have in north america because there's huge amounts of earthquakes all around uh that whole thing heading all the way down to antarctica so but what i wanted to emphasize here is that this is a very mysterious loop um, so we're starting to see that where we saw the most lightning on the planet we also have this major um kind of circular loop here um if i were to turn off um all these earthquakes you could see um, there's basically these island chains that loop around here um, like this um, and then the other mysterious thing uh, is that right where we see these most uh, numbers of uh, this this fault um, includes these goes basically out to Easter Island um, and heads out deep into the Pacific um, not not as deep as you may think but it actually goes out to Antarctica on this fault um, and then um, actually includes these triangular region here um, so believe it or not this <laughs> we're actually looking at India on the other side of this so this reincarnation loop um, may actually be connected to India um, unbelievably so um, and then we see a huge amount of earthquakes so this is actually what I wanted to emphasize here we think we get a lot in California but man look at this down in Mexico um, and even down to South America. So I'm going to just show you historically, um, we're actually getting nothing in California compared to what we're just looking at here. So we think of California as a huge earthquake zone, um, but um, really it's part of the San Andreas Fault, but actually the San Andreas Fault goes all the way up to Alaska. And actually in Alaska is where we start to finally see um, a lot more of these major earthquakes. You can see a 9.0 right there um, highlighted so that's heading up to the north pole um, but um, back to um, the lightning so we actually get no lightning as you head up that way so um, what i wanted to also say is that um it's a trade-off right so once you get to the poles you actually get snow so um it may be that all these uh natural phenomena um, you look on the maps and you'll see well they are getting snow so it, it could be that that's the trade-off um, for the lightning on the poles. Um, so, um, but anyway, so uh, take a look at this map carefully. So we are going to try to head all the way over to Africa really quickly and get back to the topic that we were discussing. So um, the crazy thing about this, um, and I want to do one more map, sorry. So I have all these maps listed on my page. I wanted to just show you this one really quick because it's a world relief map um, just to give you an idea of the mountain ranges um, it does help to look at this <coughs> so actually um, what we see is that the mountains are primarily um, in Asia actually with the Himalayan mountains you can see that that these are actually three times the size of these mountains here so we basically have this mountain range down here is two times the size um, well, not two times, but it's significantly higher um, in on average. There are certain points in here that you get very high mountains, um, but in general, this mountain range is very high, um, and it doesn't get as nearly as high um, in North America. You can see Africa actually has um, quite a plateau, but it doesn't have the mountain range. It actually gets a mountain range out here in Ethiopia. Let me zoom in so you can see. So the tallest mountain in all of Africa is over here, um, but the second tallest, or really what I would consider spiritually the tallest is actually right in here, um, which is a very mysterious location, which we just looked at on either side of the lightning area. So, um, and you can see there's gonna be some very big uh, discrepancies, right? So we see a lot of lightning collecting here and a lot of lightning collecting here, but why not here? Um, one reason for that is probably the mountain range in the front here um, prevents the wind um, from getting there and prevents the clouds. So the clouds actually get stopped um, here and they actually have to travel up through this way. Um, same thing goes here. Um, anywhere, um, it's really surprising to me um, how the clouds uh, really do avoid uh, the mountain ranges um, surprisingly. So you can also see quite a lot of mountains. There's almost even more mountains um, 
here than there is in Africa. Um, but um, this is a very helpful map because you can see these green areas and you can also see what we just looked at here, um, kind of the rivers and how that kind of got caught here, um, as well as some very mysterious areas in the Amazon jungle um, that um, actually we saw producing lightning, but it was primarily towards this region here. Um, so the one of the things that really surprised me a lot was thinking about wildlife. Um, so um, it's really important to protect a lot of these areas um, like the jungle um, and where we're getting lightning, uh, significant amounts of lightning probably should be for wildlife. Um, so we really need to think carefully. Uh, Africa actually is at the um, really the forefront of this because they have such amount of population deep in the jungle. Um, we don't see that in the Amazon so much. Um, we do see that in Southeast Asia. So really back in here, um, what what I wanted to do really quick is I just wanted to show you one roadway um, that really surprised me. So if you, if you match up these maps, um, and let me do that for you in a second. Okay, so what I just did here is added kind of the lightning map on top of this so you can see um, what we're trying to do here. Um, let me, it's going to be a little bit difficult to do this, um, but as we zoom in here, we're basically going to look at this region right in here and this region right in here. Um, I just want to keep that on the map here so you can see um, that, um, so making it a little bit, hopefully a little bit easier to try to see this. Um, and it's gonna be not exactly easy. Um, I'm sorry, this is actually the wrong color I just noticed, so let me see if I can swap that. Sorry about this. There you go. Um, so, uh, basically, um, that region um, that we've been looking at is right in here, right? Um, it's hard to see on this map um, because, uh, unfortunately, they kind of made a lot of different countries um, in all throughout Africa, which really should just be one uh, massive country, hopefully, or making it easier um, to get around Africa. But um, you'll see this map probably gives us the best area to kind of zoom in. It's really hard to see. So this line here can help us see. Um, but basically, we're talking about um, this region right in here. So there's um, you can basically center it around Rwanda and then go a little bit north um, and you'll see on the map here uh, on the other map um, basically it's basically right through here um, and right just north of that so we're looking at this piece right in here um, and that basically is the location um, now what you'll notice here is it actually is a roadway going deep into the jungle um, so this is a big problem um, because it's the way um, people are basically traveling from Rwanda. And this actually goes really far back. So this is so far back um, that, um, I mean, this is basically the back door to the jungle. This is the deepest part of the jungle. And yet you have people um, going right into the jungle there. So we have problems up in uh, Sudan right now, uh, people traveling the Nile River. And basically that goes all the way down through here and then eventually through Rwanda. And if you study... Um, some of the maps, um, there's actually the gorilla maps, um, and there's different kinds of monkeys. So there's gorillas, there's chimpanzees, all, t all there's thousands of types of monkeys. Um, so, um, but it turns out that the gorillas are the bigger of the monkeys. They've actually got such small area that some of them only have small, very small, like a few miles of habitat left. Um, and so it, people that want to go see monkeys actually go into this exact area that we're talking about, but it's extremely dangerous. This is where um, they actually had the Congo War um, and many other um, extremely serious problems. So it's not a joke. Even looking at this is probably a big no-no, um, so I'm not going to go into all the details. Um, but basically, um, I will show you one quick map um, just because it's so terrible. To so really, this should highlight the essence of the problem, right? So you basically have the deepest part of the jungle. We have complete deforestation around all of this East African place. We have complete deforestation over most of West Africa. And now we're starting to see deep deforestation right into the center of the jungle. Um, so there's no doubt in my mind um, that uh, there's a question here that needs to be thought about carefully. 
um, and particularly where these lightning zones are. Um, we need to completely avoid those areas and focus on letting the wildlife have that habitat in general. So um, you can see um, it's really um, a major problem. So it's not, um, I mean, this is the, this is the, con the deepest part of the Congo jungle. And that pathway there is something to really look at. And you can see it kind of highlights how this all happens. And you can see just um, vast areas that have been deforested. Um, so definitely something to look at um, carefully um, as we look at the lightning as well. So uh, don't worry. I'm going to try to go back and review everything. Uh, we're going to go back and look particularly at um, that lightning lake um, but we're starting to see some very interesting things here um, I just wanted to mention um, this aspect um, if you're not familiar with this already um, so what actually happens here is we have an eye here but we actually have like a lightning eye here um, and even kind of a third eye so um, it's actually this there's actually a swamp a missing swamp um, right in here that isn't really shown if you look at the rain maps you'll see that this it's exactly the same size um, here um, and so basically um, that's a very interesting um, aspect of things here um, as we discussed we have what's called the horn of Africa or the ear of Africa um, there's this mysterious earring right here um, also and then we have kind of the nose of Africa which is actually displaced we have some small um, really small areas um, of lakes but then there's kind of these big two nostrils um, kind of sideways um, here um, one of the reasons for that sidewaysness um, you can see the clouds these are live cloud images um, just being hugely important over the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo um, there's also a huge amount of stuff there too let me show you that on a map just so you can see i was very surprised to see that so i'm going to load it up so you can see there's this eye that shows up here um and you actually have to mix a couple different maps to start to see um what's going on um so this is again uh it's an absolute privilege to be able to uh show everyone this um, so i'm going to zoom change the opacity on this to actually get a link in all of these maps simultaneously so hopefully that doesn't make it too bad but this is the climate map so what we start to see is that the lightning map uh, that we were looking at um, it is actually very different right so we have a climate map um, the lightning map really would be nice to do on top of this unfortunately there isn't a KML file for that there was one it kind of disappeared on the internet um, somehow. So, um, and it wasn't quite as accurate as the one that we are looking at. So what I wanted to emphasize is that this is actually different shape, right? We're actually looking at many different shapes. Um, and there's actually even another map that I'd love to show you, uh, which is basically the rain precipitation map. Um, and that is available uh, through the FAO and it's in here somewhere. I would have to look through that um there's also the geological maps um which would be really awesome to look at as well so um and i'm sorry i'm not able to go through everything i wanted to try to primarily focus on the lightning um but uh the soil map also can tell us out quite a bit because on the soil map you start to see um some of that swamp uh land uh, so give me a moment i'm gonna try to take a break here um and hopefully zoom out from all this um, and give everyone a chance just to think about the big picture. I'm going to swap this um, like this because I really wanted to go into the details in here. Um, so surprisingly, um, some of the most um, wildest lightning um, in terms of islands, earthquakes, you combine everything all together, um, you start to get that in the ocean, in Oceania here, and you see... Um, and really, I wanted to dive into that last um, just to make sure... Um, that we covered some details there, but um, hopefully you can look at this map here. I'm gonna go get a glass of water, I'll be right back. So I'm really sorry, I wanna try to end this as soon as possible, um, but I wanted to just say, um, you know, I've only been looking at this for like a few years, and I'm already one of the first people on the planet ever to look at this. Um, so I really wanted to encourage everyone um, that's looking at this, um, I mean, 
we're starting to see things that we've never seen before. So um, there's just so many discoveries here um, that um, particularly how things um, are changing um, and um, you know once we once we start to understand how the planet works spiritually, um, it's just so exciting. So um, anyway, so we're gonna zoom in here um, into uh, the Oceana area and uh, see what this is all about. So maybe I'll keep it as a flat map. Um, I really think we should keep it as a 3D map. Um, it makes it feel a little bit more real. So, um, uh, so for privacy reasons, really for the reason of like protecting the wildlife here, we're not. I'm gonna just cancel this whole video right now. Um, if you want to dive into some of these details, um, I definitely welcome you to do that. Um, I just think that um, it's just so important, the um, fish here and the wildlife and all that. I, I'm just not going to zoom in and show everything here um, because it's probably wiser um, to just realize how uh, special the lightning is um, and see how few areas. I mean, in all of India, you only have a couple little spots um, <clears throat> back in here. Um, and really the kind of devastation that we've already seen in the deforestation in Africa, as well as in the Amazon, um, it's just better not to do that. Um, I think, um, the only comment that I will have is right in here, um, right down, my mom was actually born down here. You'll see another spot, 190, and you'll actually see up to 200. This is a heavily populated island here. Um, there's almost like a bow and arrow, um, and this is the current is really strong here. Um, so what I would say is that um, if you are working on this, if you noticed um, the start of this video, we actually started right here in Singapore. Um, we didn't even talk about it, but there's these mysterious islands here, and these actually hold the key to um, saving the wildlife in the rest of the entire ocean. Um, so what happened here is that most of the population um, in this region is actually, um, you know, a part of mainland. You know, it's basically in India. Um, let me get a population map so you can see. So, yeah, I really shouldn't have done this, but um, <clears throat> you basically see um, all of India is completely populated. It's not like that everywhere in the world. Um, and then basically there's high mountain range here, so there's no population there but China is heavily populated and then there's this island out here that is completely populated called Java so a lot of this population is pushing out in the ocean and they're planning on even populating this island um, entirely called Borneo um, you can see um, Philippines is heavily populated all throughout all the islands uh, all the coastal areas um, so it's entirely likely that uh, this map uh, in the next um, decades or hundred years, it could be very different in terms of population. Um, India is completely populated, um, so you, it's just hard to explain. So, basically, this tip is the frontier um, for all that. So, as you look at the lightning, um, you'll see that there's actually um, another spot right here in Malaysia. So you could actually go to Kuala Lumpur uh, and witness some of the most lightning. They get up to, I think it was. 200 in here as well so i have to zoom in and see where that was there's a spot in here um but look look at it carefully i think it was 190 or 200 so anyway the point is there's a huge amount of lightning uh in this region um you'll get that up in here as well uh in this channel um so that's very unusual and this is actually the tip right down here in singapore so these islands um what i'm trying to say is that uh all the shipping, um, oil products from China, everything goes around through here. And the surprising thing is that if you look at the map here, there's only about a mile or two miles. If you look at this is um, five miles, but these islands actually get quite close here. That's only one mile. So that's a, only two, one mile gap uh, between these two islands that essentially the world's shipping goes through. Um, there's a lot of pollution from shipping because it dumps some of the as the boats um i don't know how to explain it they 
they shoot out, they have to cool the engines, and that actually goes next to the oil of the engine, and it actually dumps quite a lot of, behind even a small boat, you'll see a trail of this um, kind of oil slick uh, behind it because of the cooling of the engine and some other things uh, like that. So, um, and they even do that in regular automobiles. They have coolant um, that's used to do that, but they actually filter it right with the actual water, typically um, on the engine. So this is such a small area, and you'll see all these tiny little islands. There's actually a huge amount of effort gone on here. You can take a boat um, for, um, I think, I don't know, Ten twenty dollars from Singapore over to Bhutan Island, and then start to work on helping um, with uh, what's going on with the wildlife here. And you can see this is a totally different island uh, called Sumatra, um, and they're actually starting to populate this island here. So this island is almost completely deforested. If you look at on the forestry map, and this is a hundred percent populated down here. So really. Um, the problem starts in Singapore, and a lot of the flights, if you go into Asia, a lot of the uh, big, pretty much every major company in the world now has a headquarters uh, in Singapore, believe it or not. Um, they moved it out of Hong Kong um, because uh, China is essentially trying to uh, retake over Hong Kong, So, um, which definitely it should be part of China. I mean, it's basically right in China. So Singapore uh, may also have to have the same problem someday, too. Um, because it's its own country and yet it's such a small island here so it's a very weird island i have a whole video on singapore if you're interested uh how to travel to singapore and some details on that but um basically it is an island so you can see it comes all the way around here um and most people argue um if you look at the biodiversity um it is as diverse up in these mountains here um at one point this was probably the most biodiverse place on the planet the equator runs right through singapore so it's not just any old place it's actually right on the equator um and that's an easy way to remember the equator so you're actually south of the equator if you go to jakarta and you're north of the equator if you go into thailand but you're right on the equator um and they actually had an eclipse just a few miles just recently in the last uh, few years there was an eclipse right in this region um, so it's very mysterious um, stuff that's going on right in Singapore. Um, but basically, the biodiversity all the way up into Thailand, this area has completely been deforested. Um, and I hate to mention it, but Myanmar is actually critical for India. This whole area, um, this is the last frontier for India. There's complete deforestation in all of India, but basically Assam, India, and this area up in here, uh, Bangladesh, really in this frontier mountain range. I mean, there's that's why all the people in India are moving up into the mountains is because it's so heavily populated and they're just, it's basically just very difficult. So, but the key is that this gets down into the ocean and actually India has these islands here, uh, Andaman Islands and these, <laughs> I just can't even talk about so many details, but essentially Singapore is such a hugely populated city um, and um, has unbelievable zoos and everything that you really need to know about what's going on there. And Kuala Lumpur, as you see on the lightning maps, it actually gets more lightning up into here. So um, it's a Muslim country, um, but uh, there you go. So I think it showed 190. So 224. So down in here, you start to see um, some of that unbelievable lightning. So it's it's one of those other places on Earth that you just don't expect um, to have that kind of lightning that it actually does. So the problem is that they really need to protect the wildlife in these regions. So they've already built these massive cities, um, but this should be 100% protected. Um, and you can see it kind of splits off more on the east side. So this is the west side. That's the east side. And you can see Singapore, they probably should protect this region 100% um, for the wildlife in this region. And there's all these mountains. These, so basically what happened here, um, if you look at the fishing diagrams, which we discussed uh, before, they've completely outfished the Gulf of Thailand, um, and they're just completely fishing along the coast of Vietnam. Um, and then what they do is they fish out into these islands, and that really, there's no fish, I think, primarily, there's no fishing going on in the strait because there's so much boat traffic essentially dumping. Uh, there's 
uh, really not too much any way around it, but they just dump because they have to cool the engines. And these are massive boats. So, like, I've been on a small boat, like a 13-footer, and uh, it dumps quite a lot of oil into the ocean on just a small boat. I can't imagine how much uh, it takes to deal with those engines on a, uh, you know, 1,000-foot long boat um, or more. So, um, so uh, but basically... All this area right here is a very uh, important area. So, and actually, probably you should start in Kuala Lumpur, right? Because, and even in Thailand. So, some of the best food in the world actually is in Thailand. So, I'm a little bit, um, I, I don't want to talk about my personal preference and ideas here because I really think we got to be super careful about all these regions. Um, so, it's just, it's, it's a whole different thing. Um, it's not like the United States at all. So, um, the problem is that um, uh, we have 100% deforestation in the United States. So let me just take this back to the United States and show what is going on here. So uh, basically, it's it's total deforestation, right? So you, you have a, everything has been deforested. Um, and the only reason this is green is because it's the mountain range. And this is not even, this is uh, desert land and uh, areas. So uh, it's pretty pretty brutal uh the deforestation going on so and you can see here down in the amazon jungle um it's pretty bad too so um anyway so uh but we're really trying to talk about the lightning um and what i wanted to emphasize here is that um there's something going on with the lightning because it's um almost like a um connector this little hand out here um and this is still something I'm kind of working on, and I'm sorry to talk about this so vaguely, um, but this region here is got a lot of electrostatic um, between um, basically the mainland and here. It's almost like a neuron or some kind of bridge uh, between uh, this here. And what we see on the other map, if you zoom out here, it's going to be very slow because there's hundreds of thousands of earthquakes here. Um, basically, we see um, that the earthquake bridge is very different um, because this all heads up to the North Pole, right? Um, so what we're looking at here, um, you can see that this habitat does not exist anywhere else on the planet. Um, it's all bright red here, um, and it's also right involved with the ocean. Uh, the birds are going crazy outside right now. So, um, But basically what I wanted to mention here is that um, it is dangerous. Um, these earthquakes, a friend of mine sent me a picture his whole house was completely leveled, and that was just a 6.0. Uh, they get many times more great on the earthquakes in this region. So, um, and then also the disease factors and many other things. Um, and I traveled just to Florida once, and Florida is actually uh, light pink. So if you look at most of Florida, it's not really red. It's actually like light pink. It was way too hot for me, even in Florida. So uh, it gets very hot along the equator, and we're talking... Um, you know, um, significantly warmer and uh, different. So, uh, but you can see here in China and some other regions um, here on this map. So anyway, uh, maybe there's some funny people listening in. I see like some uh, people here, um, family, friends, and some different people um, perhaps trying to understand this for the first time. But I just wanted to take a step back. If you haven't been listening to this already, what we're looking at here is unbelievable, right? So first of all, um, the number of people that have looked at our planet, yeah, maybe everyone's seen a map of our planet, um, but it's in the millions or even thousands. And even you might, you and me watching this right now are probably the first people ever to look at such great detail um, that we've just looked at. Um, so um, really uh, be thankful that we just looked at this. Um, this is the most detailed map of the um of all the lightning on the planet ever um and you know there's only there's only been a few thousand people um that have gone through all this uh uh maybe even less you know and it really is kind of funny because um it's all available and yet no one's really trying to go through all the details um and so some of uh one of the funny things is that as i kind of grow up and get older here i realize um so many of my friends um, I'm trying to work with my friends. Like I just have friends like live right across the street or 
you know, they like because I, I realized, man, um, you know, these guys are going to be the experts for the planet. Like no one's looked at all this information before. And so it's like it's it's only a few people have actually really sat down and, and looked at all of this um, carefully. Um, so, um, you know, it's really kind of exciting to work with uh, friends and family and neighbors and different people um uh, you know, wherever they are on the planet, uh, looking at this, because, um, like, like I said, uh, there's little surprises that we just saw, um, with the lighting and there's going to also see some surprise down here. You see 160 right along the coast of Australia. This is called Darwin, an area called Darwin, Australia. Um, I, I really wanted to avoid this map entirely. So I, I just wanted to say, um, be careful as you study this, you could die. Um, there are very dangerous places to go on the planet, and many of those are going to be right. I mean, there's lots of kidnappings, just terrible things going on in many places that we've already just looked at. Um, so it's not a joke. Um, definitely plan what you're trying to do. And, and I would say um, right here, even in the United States, um, Louisiana has some of those same characteristics um, for the lightning. And, you know, Mexico, there's just so many things that we just looked at that are um unbelievable so um and um what i wanted to do i want to show you some really weird stuff right at the end of this so we just looked at the lightning but um look at what's going on here so in the middle east we start to see a weird connection uh between through this lightning area right you start to see these weird shapes and even this gap here um which is up in the himalayas you start to see these weird um things going on um, and as well as kind of this uh, handshake across the ocean, right? You see this weird um, kind of like a zone here um, heading out here uh, and then just kind of like blasting out into the ocean here uh, with New Zealand uh, heading out into Fiji. Um, and then these shadows that we talked about, these lightning shadows. Um, so why is it so biased? Like why is lightning up here? Um, it's definitely not the rain maps are not consistent. There's so many inconsistencies um, in all these maps. Um, and definitely, um, you know, if you've had the time to look at this, um, you want to start um, being cautious. What I wanted to emphasize, I wasted so much time um, thinking about this logically. Um, there was a lot of superstitions, weird ideas that I had, and almost all of them seem to be absolutely true. Um, so um, what, what I'm basically arguing with you is that you're going to waste a lot of time looking at the planet 100% logically. Um, you know, this boot out into the stars, the shapes that you see, uh, these this weird point here from Australia. Um, look at everything. Look at everything in a new way about the planet. Um, so not only are you going to be one of the one of the people that really look at this for the first time in history, but you'll probably find something uh, way beyond anything I've ever looked at. And I'm so um, happy to be able to introduce everyone uh, to some of these ideas. So, um, and the lightning, what I wanted to tell you is the funniest story, and I want to end it with this. I probably should have started with this. So, my friend and I, um, there is these lightning maps, uh, and this is not a good map at all, and I do not recommend using this map ever. Um, what I recommend is actually looking for lightning. So in the United States, what happens is that the lightning is basically created, you could say created, in Louisiana, and it kind of flows up this way. Every once in a while, we get lightning in Idaho. Um, so my friend, who looks like Jesus, heaven forbid maybe he is christ jesus or i have several friends now they look like jesus in idaho and one day we got lightning out here and i was kind of freaking out and i was like hey you know let's like let's hop into a car and like go track down where the lightning is and it was an unbelievable experience um it was really we tracked it down to a to the largest grain silo it actually the dot showed up right next to the largest grain silo in one of the largest grain silos in the world so this area we're known for the wheat so if you eat bread it probably comes from either canada or idaho um, and this is like a huge area of farmland for wheat um, it's no joke potatoes are from idaho and all that so uh 
But what I wanted to say, it was an unbelievable experience to track it down. This map is not so great. You can also use the NASA map because they don't track everything. Um, you'll have to get, um, you'd have to do the windy map. I, I think that's probably a little bit better, but they don't save the data. It's hard. You'd have to like screenshot the data. It's, it's hard to get all that. So, um, but definitely track that lightning down. Find out the specific building. It will be. It will completely blow your mind spiritually when you track that lightning down. Um, and what that really meant to me when it when I saw that big silo and I saw all these trucks. There was like, you know, all these trucks pulling in with their grain and everything. I was just like, there's no way. I was like, this lightning strike actually means something very important. So. What I would say is that every lightning, that was just a small, like we're in like like an area where we essentially right here, we get like one lightning strike per year per kilometer. Um, that's essentially nothing compared to these. Like if you know how small a kilometer, you can walk a kilometer in like less than five minutes or whatever, you know, it's like you can just like walking a couple, like one block is essentially like a kilometer. They're getting 200, you know, strikes per square kilometer in some of these areas. That's not safe at all. Um, so like, you know, and it really starts by just appreciating one little lightning pole near near your house. And it just, I, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but it was definitely worth it. Find someone who looks like Jesus, go try to find the lightning strike, see what happens. It was unbelievable. Every part of the trip was unbelievable. And we just stood there and there was just so, it, it was like, it was crazy. You know, it's like out of a, I don't know what to say, but, you know, he's, like, standing there stroking his beard and looking out into the lightning, and I'm just like, man, this is nuts, um, and uh, there was just, it was just surreal, um, really, really interesting experience, just the whole process of tracing the lightning, um, so, um, again, I just want to say, wow, like, we just looked at everything, um, and take a look at these maps, um, this is the first time in history, um, this this was not easy to find this map um, for me. Um, you know, I spent years looking for it, um, and then finally, it showed up. So, uh, and I'm doubtful very many people have ever looked at this um, in great detail. And like I said, um, be careful. Um, um, many of these areas, um, you will die if you visit them. They're not like very friendly, necessarily about visitors in some of these locations. So. Um, it's uh, definitely takes uh, some effort uh, to think about, and there's definitely some huge prop problems because of the water pollution and you know just um, overall problems caused by killing essentially everything on the island or killing almost everything, cutting down every tree in the United States or India or deforesting the Congo jungle. It's not going to be a peaceful environment um, for the animals, and it's not going to be peaceful for the for the humans as well. So. Um, but, uh, I like to watch this. I do try to watch the lightning sometimes, um, you know, and like, even when I've been doing some of these videos, there's been sudden, and you're not going to believe it, but I mean, there's like a sudden lightning, like a bolt, you know, and like a, like the rain, it just suddenly started raining when I was talking about one of these projects. Um, as I was working on it, I was just, I had to stop the video and I was just like, wow, this is not quite what I was expecting. From the planet you know i was expecting just to i live on this planet it's not really doing anything interesting um you know that's the way i originally i went through a pretty serious science a background and was not expecting uh to even listen to the breeze you know i just heard a breeze go by uh, and just kind of laugh at me but um i was not expecting at all um any of this so uh i'm really excited to be able to trust to kind of say hey now it's your turn to look at this in detail, um, have some fun, um, and uh, try to see it really differently. Um, there's a lot of things that we didn't really discuss um, on this, um, particularly as you get towards the North Pole. You're going to look at a lot of the pictures. I took uh, 100 plus pictures of all the lightning so you can kind of see. Um, but you, as I, as I look at this, you're going to start to see these weird shapes, um, some weird things um, that you maybe didn't quite expect. Um, and... Um, we all need to be so thankful for everyone's help, um, and uh, I'm so thankful, and I hope you'll have a fun time looking at this. See you later. So thanks again for looking at everything um, for the first time in history.
Um, and, and, uh, you know, um, we're gonna, uh, you know, and I just want to say, um, thanks a lot. Um, and there are, um, a lot of fun projects. Um, what I would say is that also try to make a fun project of whatever you're trying to do. Um, I'm working on a couple of different things, uh, different kinds of papers and also just, um, fun ways to contact people around the world um, and really understand. Um, it is really, um, after contacting some people, um, <clears throat> at first it can be completely frightening. Um, <clears throat> you start to realize, wow, um, this is a real person um, and they're really struggling with some kind of problem. Um, could be disease. I mean, people have lost arms, legs, I mean, that I've contacted um, and just, um, I mean, there's been many people that have died um, and, uh, it's really surprised me, um, the, the situations around the world. Um, and I tried my best to, um, first I went through all these, trying to donate hundreds of dollars to try to help people out. Um, and also, and then I tried to make up some projects, um, and some of them got to be pretty big, um, you know, uh, pretty massive ideas. Um, and, uh, but what I really wanted to emphasize is have fun, um, no matter who or what kind of idea you're working with, uh, and then be very cautious, like listen to the animals, um, right outside. I have a pet squirrel now that I try to feed every day. I give him clean water and he reminds me to not waste my time on the internet, um, and things like that. Um, and, uh, so just try to listen to the planet near you, the breeze, uh, as you study this, I have my window. You can see uh, the windows open right there, um, and maybe I should keep it like that a little bit so you can see the open window. But uh, cameras kind of messed up here. Sorry about that. Uh, but uh, yeah, so so yeah, and and I would say uh, I was listening to some speeches the other night. Um, some people were saying only think about the big picture and the biggest possible ideas. Um, the big picture really is looking at the details as well as the big picture. Um, so you really have to do both. Um, you know, you don't want to do necessarily just one or the other and try to just think about even stuff outside of all this stuff that we've already looked at. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, and, and then also started the conversation. We did start kind of looking at perhaps how to help the wildlife, um, there in Singapore, um, but what I wanted to say is that everything is really connected. Um, so um, I wanted to close on this concept, which is maybe a difficult concept to explain. Um, I was always told that you had to have um, very specific evidence um, to connect uh, one idea with another, and it had to be precisely connected. Um, and what happens is that there's always going to be people that are going to question um, whether it's your logic or your spiritual side. Um, there's always going to be faults. There's always going to be correct things and things. Um, but what I wanted to challenge you is to go further um, than you ever have gone uh, with whatever ideas you've looked at about the planet. Um, here we looked at capitals of other planets in our solar system. We looked at exoplanets. We looked at the North Pole, South Pole. We've looked at some really wild ideas about how to re-understand every continent on the planet. Um, there's still a lot of details um, and bigger concepts that we're probably even missing um, that need to be understood. Um, so, But everything is all connected um, in a wonderful way. So try to look at everything um, and try to take a break and do some other stuff. Uh, and what I really want to encourage people um, that I kind of miss doing in the college environment is not necessarily sitting in a classroom, but having discussions, open discussions, uh, wild discussions really, and listening to all different kinds of people, um, whether they're handicapped, uh, have a disability, or um, you think they completely don't understand anything. Um, listen to everything and everyone and try to come up with some really fun ideas um it's not uh necessarily all um you know uh putting the pieces of the puzzle together um you know uh sometimes there's going to be people out there that get really 
uh, upset essentially uh, because you have understood something or worked on something um, and they don't quite agree with you or understand um, your perspective. Um, but it's really nice to have different perspectives. So don't get uh, too caught up in making sure that um, it makes sense to everything of the past or even follows what AI says. Um, you know, we're really trying to go way beyond anything we've ever understood about the planet. Um, so, and I just want to say thanks. Uh, I really want to try to make friends here and work with different people. If you wanted to contact me, contact me, um, you know, either by phone or by email, texting, or contact someone in my family or other people that I know, um, and I'll definitely try to get back with you and work with you on whatever it is you want to work on. Um, um, it's definitely true that some of these details gets into some very dangerous areas that we just looked at. Like I said, lightning is not something to be messed around with. I didn't even get into all the uh, voltages and details about, um, apparently it's supposed to be hotter than the surface of the sun, lightning bolt. There's just so many crazy um, ideas out there about, um, in terms of the logic. Um, so, but uh, what I really wanted to say is that um, I really am thankful to be able to work with people on stuff. So at this point in my life, I'm trying to actually work on practical stuff, um, really fun ideas, um, whether it is, uh, you know, theater, uh, business ideas, or um, whatever other kind of idea people come up with. Um, I'm really happy to try to help you out. Um, I like really easy and fun projects. I also like really difficult projects. Um, I am have had a number of different kinds of jobs over my career, um, and some of them uh, have been certainly very boring, um, and I'm really looking for fun stuff uh, to help out with. So, um, And it really helps to understand the planet. Um, so um, the scary thing is that, um, yeah, I mean, um, pretty much every idea, um, I wouldn't rest, like I've, I had so many different ideas after looking at the entire planet, um, like do this, do that, let's try this, whatever, you know, and uh, sometimes because of my old career path, um, <clears throat> everything had to be uh, done uh, immediately almost and in a row, all the ducks had to be, everything had to be figured out perfectly, um, but now I'm kind of waiting uh, more for both spiritual and logical sides of things and new projects come up, um, old projects uh, change, uh, and I try to work with others um, and also uh, I want to emphasize working with people on, on uh, you know, basically uh, originally one of my friends uh, was really poor, a couple of my friends have been struggling over the years, um, you know, we tried to get a, kind of a business going together. Um, I learned a lot because I tried to do everything, you know, do the lease, uh, pay all the bills, all that, and eventually they ended up. I actually learned more from them as I said, hey, it's easier to let someone else who already has a business do whatever they're doing first. Um, maybe don't be in charge of whatever the project is. <coughs> so uh, let other people uh, kind of do uh, that if they really want to do it. Don't necessarily think you have to do um, everything. So um, anyway, uh, yeah, so I really uh, hope the best. Um, you know, there's so much stuff that we need to do here. Um, again, protecting the wildlife is key here. Um, it made my life so much better just having a pet animal. Um, and <clears throat> what we just looked at here um, is essentially the entire planet um, and the lightning for the planet. Um, so I just wanted to thank you um, and uh, <clears throat> let me know um, what you're trying to work on. Or, uh, and I'll be glad to try to help you out. Thank you so much.